space. The limits of God's imagination are unknown, but let us engage in this mystery as we worship. Genesis 32, the wrestling match, Jacob and the angel. Who is this angel? Let us find out together and the significance for us in the 21st century. Welcome, welcome all of you, no matter where you may be sitting, as we continue now into August, our second month, as we worship together on these beautiful, beautiful sacred lands. Let us continue and proclaim the message of Jesus Christ. light the Christ candle and the candle of reconciliation and peace. Bring forth the Christ candle. Flame dances, Christ's spirit dances with us through the cross from Calvary and into the 21st century. Peace. And now for our candle of reconciliation and peace. The candle of reconciliation and peace upholding the seven grandfather teachings and being mindful of right relations with all peoples on earth. Amen. Gathered on this land, keep us mindful of the movements in time. Help us to embrace our imperfections and transform them into vehicles for peace. Be with us as we strive to make right with all our relations. Amen. And now for our gathering response. Our God is a God who makes free. This morning and look look at the star stars above as you see on your screen we've had a visitor from the celestial bodies the neo wise comet is on its way out leaving the northern hemisphere and will be entering the southern hemisphere of our gorgeous planet but as these celestial bodies come let us remember as numerous 
as there are stars. Christ's love is even more vast. What blessing has come to you from a time of struggle? Our call to worship. Our call to worship. The Spirit is walking with us. We paddle together and are challenged by unknown forces. What will we find in the deep end of the lake? The Spirit turns our boat in ways that seem to frighten us. Christ is still with us, and we learn and grow from experience. Christ is our guide and Savior. Through all storms, as the waters churn, wisdom is brought to our attention. Let us drink from the cup of Christ. Let us continue to love as Christ taught. Our first hymn, number 560, Voices United. O oh Master, let me walk with Thee. Christ, as we continue forward into a new month, the celestial bodies come and they depart. The blue skies are here, the clouds arrive and they depart. The rain arrives and it departs. The cycle of life continues. Walk with us, God, wherever we are in the cycle of life, whatever emotion we may be feeling right now, happy, sad, angry, frustration, joy, feeling bad, whatever the emotion is, Christ, be with us. Continue walk to with us throughout the cycle of life and embrace each other as the way you taught. Amen. Okay, our celestial bodies, the Neowise Comet. We're taking a different turn. Carl Sagan is uh, not an ancient Sufi mystic. <laughs> His actually date of death was um, actually the same year as my father's. Uh, astronomer, very knowledgeable astrophysics, and his words are still relevant today, a person within our own time. 
Let us listen. It has been said that astronomy is a humbling and character building experience. There is perhaps no better demonstration of the folly of human conceits than this distant image of our tiny world. To me, it underscores our responsibility to deal more kindly with one another and to preserve and cherish the pale blue dot, Earth, the only home we've ever known. Beautiful words by an astronomer, Carl Sagan, and reminds us as being good stewards of our creation, this amazing, beautiful planet, this earth that God has given us. Let us paddle forward. For our Hebrew scripture reading, it will be Genesis 32, 22 to 31, from the New Revised Standard Version. Now on the screen, it says it'll be read by Carol Wells Gordon. However, Sue Zilke is pinch hitting this morning. I couldn't resist the baseball analogy. We are gonna keep Carol in our prayers. She's um, not she's feeling a little under the weather, but we will hold her in our prayers. And now we're gonna hear Sue's voice from the Hebrew scripture, the book of Genesis. Jacob wrestles at Penel. The same night he got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of the Jacob. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said to Jacob. Then the man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my, my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Penal, saying, For I have seen God's face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose up upon him as he passed Penuel, limping against because of his hip. The second scripture is the gospel uh, scripture of Matthew chapter 14 verses 13 to 21 by the New Revised Standard Version. Feeding the 5,000. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over the broken pieces, twelve baskets full, and those who ate were about five thousand men besides women and children.
Thank you for that reading, Sue. It was excellent. So it was um, great. We work together, teamwork, and we will paddle forward and adjust with the waters ahead. And now for our ministry of music, Grace Alone. begin our journey from the message, the scripture, Jacob is wrestling with an angel. Now, this is not Greco-Roman style wrestling. We can take this literally. There is a place where biblical archaeologist, it's debatable, here it is, where Jacob is wrestling with this angel. Hmm. Well, what does this mean? Remember earlier, uh, we'll close this. When I said we can interpret these images literally, Jacob actually wrestling with an angel. You see the picture right here, Jacob and the angel. Be hard to pin someone with wings. He really had his work cut out for him. However, we can also look at this struggle metaphorically. What struggles do we have in our life? Let's first examine Jacob. Jacob, we're following him, the Jacob's ladder, followed Abraham out of Ur. Jacob, his lineage leads to Joseph. Joseph of the multicolored coat, he inspired me this morning. But Jacob, this wrestling match, he wrestling with an angel liberal and conservative scholarship on both sides believes that this angel, not 100% certain, is actually representation of God. Jacob wrestling with God. Remember, he's running away from Esau and he wants to reconcile with him because he took his blessing. He misled his father, he had to work the extra seven years to marry Rachel. So he's struggling with God. I have my own struggles with scripture. We all do as humans. And a result of this late night struggle throughout the night, 
Jacob refuses to submit until, until the sun rises and then it dawns on him. The angel does walk away that the identity of this angel, it was God. Jacob wrestling with the divine. Jacob's name changes to Israel. Okay, this is significant. Israel. May El preserve. Okay, Israel. When you see that E-L, Rachel. Okay, Daniel, E-L. That's El, the God, the northern kingdom of Israel. That's the sign to Yahweh. Okay, so Israel, the people of Israel, the constant struggle. This is the metaphorical, historical metaphorical interpretation of the wrestling match between Jacob and the angel. Now, what about our lives? Because we're not going to ancient Israel and we're not going to be wrestling uh, an angel. However, whether it's here in Bob Cajun, Kawartha Lakes, I almost said city of Kawartha Lakes. I've learned that that's not a popular thing, so I'm still struggling myself. So, we have our own struggles, whether they could be family, neighbors, church. Church is different. I mean, look, look around me. I wasn't expecting this. Probably you weren't expecting you're going to be spending more time through YouTube, but we're struggling. We are going forward. There's physical illness, mental illness, loss of a loved one. Loved one could be sick. Loved one could be in the hospital. Our visitation is restricted because of COVID. Visitation at the nursing homes is changed because of COVID. Our own struggles right here and right now, but we continue forward. Remember at the end of the struggle, Jacob, He has a memory from that struggle, his hip. There's a limp, okay? God has given him a sign. Now, Jacob doesn't see the orthopedic surgeon. Of course, they don't have it. We do today. But there are marks, signs of struggle that we endure as Jacob had to. As Jacob continues forward with his new name, Israel, at Penel. And notice the last two letters of when Sue did her reading. E-L, another sign of God. Rachel, Daniel, Penel, E-L, Israel. Also, if you ever go, when we can fly, if you see the Israeli airlines, El Al, L, E-L, another sign of God. Let's take this struggle, Jacob, Human, just like you and I, but he's actually struggling with the divine. He takes what he has and he goes forth. It's insignificant. When you think of when I was reading about um, Carl Sagan's quote, a pale blue dot, think of the planet Earth in this vast solar system. It's it's insignificant. Just the small grain of dust, insignificant. But with insignificant means, we can reach a vast audience. We can grow from one wrestling match, a sore hip. Jacob, in his new name Israel, continues to walk forward and to build a great nation, the journey into Cana, okay? I always enjoy saying this, Cana, because Moses had a lisp. Uh, when I went to, was fortunate to visit um, Israel, the Holy Land uh, once, and they, uh, my guide told me a joke that Moses had a lisp. He was leading his people to the promised land, but the lisp was, K -k 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 -k. he meant to say Canada. Okay, no, of course, there's no Canada back in Jacob's time or Moses' time. But Jacob leads on the journey, which will continue through Moses, and they'll be in the promised land, Cana. 
one wrestling match to a promised land, to a great nation, God's chosen people. Now, let's take these insignificant, insignificant occurrences in life in our New Testament reading. Right on the shores of the Galilee. Let's look at this map, okay? Here it is. So, you have the Mediterranean Sea. You have the Dead Sea. Right here, this body of water is the Sea of Galilee, okay? So this is where the New Testament reading takes place. This slide that you're going to see right now is called the Christi Mensi, okay? The Table of Christ. This is, is it the exact location? I don't know, and probably not. But this is the location where the miracle happens, where Jesus, the five loaves of bread, the two fish, multiplies and feeds the thousands. If you forget uh, if the fish is five or the bread's five, you look at this, the beautiful mosaics, and you see the two fish, and in the middle, the basket. That's the five loaves of bread. And again, the same thing what I did with the wrestling match. Were there really five loaves of bread and two fish? Was one a pickerel and the other a muskie? I have no idea. That's not important for me. But what's important? Okay, insignificant. Two fish, five loaves of bread multiplies the feeding of the thousands. Sharing, sharing our skills. That's the word I'm going to take from the New Testament reading that you heard from Sue this morning is that we all, just right here, right now, I'm going to use this example of this space. I'm blessed, I'm fortunate. Ross is behind the camera. Meg is on the piano doing an excellent job. Patrick and her choir, Sue, reading. See, we're taking each of our gifts all together. Like, you know, well, there's five of us. Five loaves of bread. See, we're coming together and helping nourish Christ's gospel to the congregation, the community, and YouTube, it can go anywhere in the world. The multiplication. See, look at Christ, look, 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 look what's going on here. Two fish, five loaves of bread. There's different interpretations. Some scholarship has said what happened with the Jesus and the disciples is that People went, the disciples went and approached various people, and if they had one fish or one loaf of bread, they started sharing, and that's how everyone was able to be fed. Those details, I do not know how this happened, or literally, were there actually just two fish and five loaves of bread. But what is relevant for us in the 21st century, right here and now, is that we work together within our gifts. We work together as a team. It's a small group, like five loaves of bread, two fish. We work together, we come together, and to help proclaim and spread the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, let's take a step forward. That's just five of us. How about five of you? Join us. And then there'll be ten. And we do the exact same thing. We take another step forward. And the multiplication continues. The sharing and the love. Let's go back in the history. Just in the history of this church, Trinity Hall. People immigrating from established lands, whether through England, Scotland, Wales, Ireland, coming to this, wow, new land. There weren't roads, no plumbing, uh, no outhouses. What do we do? But they came together within their gifts, limited means as individuals, but together they built a church. Over 100 years, this year, 160th anniversary. Yeah, this is exciting right here. 
Trinity, where we're standing. It's also a bigger anniversary year for Providence United Church. Coming together within our limited means and then expanding, sharing the love of Christ. Just like the five loaves of bread and the two fish. Bringing our skills together and they multiply. They multiply and we grow and learn in faith and the love of Christ Jesus. Another aspect of the story, leftovers. Think about when the Hebrews are going through the desert in Exodus, Sinai. The manna falls from heaven, but it disappears. It goes spoils, it's bad. There are leftovers in the miracle story that Sue read this morning. So, what's the relevant for us here in the 21st century? The work that we do, there will be leftovers. As we proclaim the love and the gospel of Jesus Christ, I don't know where the leftovers will be, but there will be signs of our work. Jacob had a sign with his wrestling match in his hip. The signs of love will fall and they will grow as the seed, as the mighty, this little, little mighty mustard seed, the mighty mouse of seeds of biblical era. It'll grow and we work together. Our efforts shall grow. And I wanna share a story from my time. When I was working in the hospital, I'm gonna call him Tommy. Tommy, he had a life-threatening, life-changing, sorry, life-changing diagnosis, schizophrenia. Mental health is a very serious concern. We were the same age, growing up, Sunday school. He was all ready to play professional basketball. Going to be drafted in the NBA. His skills even got him a scholarship. Played in Europe until one day, boom, the door closed. He received a diagnosis, schizophrenia. Well, he was angry, and I don't blame him. Uh, there wasn't going to be the NBA. He found himself shooting hoops in the hospital gym. Now, very interesting what happened. Let's look at our story. Old Testament, with Jacob wrestling with the angel. One person wrestling with the angel, God. And he continues forward. We wrestle with scripture. Jesus, five loaves of bread, two fish, multiplication, sharing, love, feeding the masses. They're even leftovers. Let's come to Tommy. Tommy, see, we grew up in church. You remember the story, the one that Sue read this morning. And his skill set, which was vast, it had shrunk because of his diagnosis. However, he used his skill set. He was actually helping some of the guards, security guards with their basketball, other patients with their own basketball skills. He actually got better and he continues to this day to return to the same hospital where he was being treated for schizophrenia. This is how he conducts his ministry. What he was given, a skill set, it changed with schizophrenia, but the skills were still there. He used them, it was limited, just like five loaves of bread, two fish, and then he helped spread love and joy by helping people with their own basketball skills, by giving them self-confidence, healing, the healing hands of Christ, whether it's working through a wrestling match, one of the miracles of Christ, feeding of the thousands, or, or even basketball mystery of Christ. Praise be to the risen Christ. Christ has died. He shall return.
Amen. and concerns. Well, first, joy is easy one. I just, I want to thank uh, Patrick for coming in this morning. We're getting some great singing. I anticipate we're going to just sound, it's just going to keep on getting better, exciting. Christ is with us. Very, very good. Now, folks, continuing, we have two back-to-back. -back. My first baptism, actually uh, next week, Sunday, August 2nd, and then following another baptism, Sunday, August the 9th. So that's a, that's a joy, a sacrament within the United Church of Canada. So we have two baptisms. Let's see if there's another one for the month of August. Uh, concerns? I uh, just ask uh, in your prayers, please keep uh, Susan Murray in your th uh, thoughts and prayers. Uh, also, Gary Burns. And um, I think she'll, uh, she'll be getting better soon, but let's do that as well. Uh, Carol, Carol Wells Gordon. Let's also keep her in our prayers. And uh, if there's anyone else that I perhaps do not know, whatever affliction maybe you may be dealing with, we hold you in our prayers, our prayer life here at Trinity and Providence. United Church. Of course, uh, announcements. We're going to be having a mini newsletter. Yes, our, we should have one ready for August. It's, it will be a mini 
newsletter. So it won't be like what you're used to with the Caroline. That is a lot of work, which I wanna thank uh, Sue Pepper. She does a lot of work for that. This is one page, okay? Um, the main aim of this one page mini newsletter is to reach people who do not have access to the internet, gonna be using YouTube, not comfortable with Zoom. So we're gonna be keeping together just like in the scripture story, the five loaves of bread, the two fish, working together as a team and spreading, spreading that message, sharing our gifts and skills, the gospel message will reach everyone in our community of faith. And there's even going to be leftovers. Love for the stranger. Yeah. Prayers for the people. Let us pray. Christ guide us as we work together and adjust to the changing waters. Whatever the future may bring, it's unknown. But what we do know is we have Christ as our anchor, Christ as our guide, guiding us going through the darkness, through the fog and emerging into the light, the light of his heavenly love, grace and mercy. God, we also ask those who make political decisions, which affect millions to billions of people, that those decisions are made with the love and grace that Christ Jesus taught. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Now, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power of the glory forever and ever, amen. Our responsive hymn. that we have expenses and different ways we can give. Please consider your community of faith as we proclaim the gospel message of Christ Jesus. We can give through e-transfer, call the office for details, par, pre-authorized remittance, or writing a check to the church. There is a fourth way through our website. However, the donation that you give, there will be a 4% surcharge of that will be going to Canada Helps. So the three ways that are listed on the screen that you can give to Trinity and Providence United Church. Our offering song in gratitude and humble trust.
Christ, as we raise our hands, reach out to you, our Heavenly Father in heaven. Bless these gifts, offerings from our hearts, as we seek to nurture the ministry right here at Trinity and Providence United Church, as we seek to help proclaim the gospel message of Christ Nietzsche, Jesus, and be a beacon of the healing light of love. In your son's name we pray, amen. And now for our commissioning. Water, I'm gonna continue with that theme. As we take Christ's message, the breaking of the bread, the multiplication of the fish, look in the water, and we continue forward with the communion of saints and fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And we lift up our blessings, our gifts from God, to help proclaim the gospel message that the peace of Christ be with you, your loved ones, whether they are here with us, or they are in the body of Christ for now and evermore. Amen. Our going out song, may the peace of the Lord Christ.